New science is making it so doctors can take a heart that's been dead for 20 minutes and implant it in another person. They're beating the odds. Yeah, yeah, that was a bad one. Hey everybody, thanks for watching D News Today. I'm Trace. Heart transplantation surgery is the process of taking a heart from a donor and placing it in another person to help their quality of life. The first successful heart transplant was in December of 1967, and it's difficult to move a heart from one person to another, so usually they would use a cadaver, mainly because the heart has to be kept alive and beating, or on ice. If the heart stops beating, it won't be used for donation because it could be damaged from a lack of blood supply. Ironically, because it's a heart, you know, pumps blood. But doctors in Sydney are starting to change this practice and to improve their theories, they just implanted a dead heart into a patient. It wasn't really dead. See, most organ donations use a beating heart cadaver, basically a brain-dead human body hooked up to a medical ventilator to keep the organs alive. Within a few days, doctors can remove the heart, put it in a cooler, and fly it to wherever it's needed. Once on ice, they have about four to six hours to get it into someone before the heart is spoiled. According to one source, only 4% of people who have signed up to donate their organs end up having viable organs. And only a third of those get used because of this time constraint. Thus, any advancement which can extend that window will increase the number of hearts available to be used. The dead heart that they used in Sydney wasn't actually dead, like I said, but it had stopped beating for 20 minutes. Normally, they wouldn't use that at all, but because of a machine called a heart in a box made by Transmedics, they were able to restart the heart, fill it up with the donor's blood, warm it up, and then assess whether it was still good before implanting it. This was two months ago. Today, the woman who got that first one, she's doing great, and they've done similar operations on three other patients since. It's a huge breakthrough for organ donation and could increase the number of hearts available for everybody. But if you're like me, then you're thinking, wouldn't my heart be better than somebody else's heart? Sure, but we're not there yet. Scientists are able to create beating heart cells, individual groups of cells in Petri dishes, but constructing a three-dimensional heart is still many years away. Last year, researchers at the Texas Heart Institute demonstrated that they were able to take a pig's heart and run detergent through it to strip away the lipids, DNA, DNA, soluble proteins, sugars, and most of the other cellular material, and then use what was left. What was left is called an extracellular matrix. It's what holds the cells together. To create a new heart is sort of like extreme renovation. They've done this with a human heart too, but building on the framework of an existing organ is pretty difficult, though it's not as difficult as building a whole one from scratch. That being said, earlier this month, a study in Nature Medicine revealed how doctors used stem cells from humans to grow functional human intestinal tissue inside of mice. And technology from Salgrenska University Hospital in Sweden can grow a whole blood vessel in a week using stem cells that are just floating in two tablespoons of regular human blood. That vessel is essentially the donor's own tissue. The next step is to begin growing those simple organs, like back in April when a company in the UK made a human ear or a human nose. We've got a long way to go to get those internal complicated ones though. Are you an organ donor? Why or why not? What do you think about stuff like this? Comment down below and make sure you subscribe for more D news every day of the week. Also, if you'd like to become an organ donor, we put a link down in the description so you can do it. Thanks for watching, everybody.